There was a small town at the foothills of a mountain. People would go into the mines and dig to see what they could find. Sometimes they'd find precious stones, sometimes they'd find useful metal, sometimes just dirt and roots. But that's the nature of mining, you'll never quite be sure what you'll find. Well, one day, they were out digging and they found something very unusual. An old stone door, or at least it appeared to be a door. There was a crack between it and what was left of a tumbled down wall, broken down by years and weight. There were etchings on the wall of a tall, thin figure of many small figures before it. They looked at this with confusion. Was this perhaps an ancient king or a warlord of his army? Who could this important figure be? With great curiosity, the men gathered together with their pickaxes and hammers and broke down the door. And they looked inside. Dirt. Emptiness. A hollow room with a single dead body in it, slumped against the ground, withered and mummified. There were holes in the hands, and strangely, not in the face. They simply blamed this on time and decay. A body left to itself for long enough will do many strange things, you know. They closed the door back as best as they could, and went about their business of digging, hoping to find something actually useful. Time went by, the seasons changed, and with the warming of the earth, the first child went missing. They were very confused. He hadn't shown any signs of discontent. He wasn't afraid, nor overly adventurous for that matter. Just a regular child. And one day he was home, the next day he wasn't. They checked the hills and the valleys. They checked the neighboring towns. They checked with the parents of other children. No one had seen him, no one had heard anything from him. They were very worried, but there wasn't much they could do. Another child went missing. This child didn't really know the first one, so it wasn't likely he'd gone looking for the original one. Where did he go? There were no signs of a fight, no blood, no broken branches, nothing missing, nothing taken. Just gone. By now, the people were beginning to become very concerned. They checked the water sources, nothing. They checked the forests, nothing. Then one of them thought, maybe the mines. After all, children can be curious. Perhaps they'd wandered in and couldn't find their way back out again. They went into the mines and began to look around, when one of them stopped by the old door. Hey, what if the children were hiding out there? And they pushed away the door, and what they found bothered them. There were two pairs of shoes, and the body had moved, and looked just a little bit plumper than before, a little bit less withered and dried. The people paused. What could this mean? Even though it didn't settle right with them, they still left it be. A week later, another child missing. They looked carefully all over, and then they checked the mines. A third pair of shoes was there, and the body had changed places. By now it was obvious something was very wrong with whatever was in that mine. They set out a man to keep watch overnight, and he waited, and he waited, until almost a week had passed, and they saw a slender, waxy figure emerging from the mine. It looked about, but as it cast its head back and forth, it became obvious. It wasn't looking with its head. It was listening with its head. Its hands were positioned before it, sweeping back and forth in wide, slow motions, an eye set into each palm, staring out darkly like the eyes of an animal. By morning, another child was gone. They did their best to steal the creature in. They went ahead and closed the stone door back. They piled heavy rocks on it and iron bars. They tried closing off the mine, sealing all entrances, collapsing it in so it was nothing but earth and stone. And still, children were going missing, albeit a touch slower than before. Nothing was working. Certainly someone had to have some clue of what was going on. Perhaps an old wise woman, someone who had seen this before. And so they took their fastest horse, and they sent out one man to go searching the mountains. There had been rumor that somewhere out there was an old wise woman, just what they were seeking. And he hoped, hoped among hope, that she was still alive. And it took weeks, weeks of hunting and looking and listening for rumors. She lived very quietly, you see. Just a little subsistence farm, not very much, by a little stream, nestled away in a valley. When he found her, he was so grateful. Please, please help us! The children! They're being taken by some horrible creature in the mines. Nothing is ever left of them, nothing but their shoes. Please help us. She stopped. Please tell me more. And he told her the story, everything he knew about the children going missing, the strange body in the mines, the etching on the door. I think I can help you, but you will have to do everything that I say. Yes, please, please, anything. And so the two set off. By the time they'd returned, the people were in such a sorry state. So many children lost, so much resources wasted. She called the town together. 
I know what we need to do. I need a wonderful dining table, the best that you can create. Bring me your food stores as well. I need to select the best. And so the people gathered together what they could, and she looked over it carefully. Hmm, it's not perfect, but yes, this should do. Now, I need your very best cooks to come together. Create the very best dishes you can with everything I've selected. I know, I know, it looks like a lot, but believe me, it is worth it. And so the people of the town got to work, cooking a grand and lavish feast, the very best they could with what they had on hand. And the old woman began to work as well, carefully carving and etching on the old, beautiful table, turning into something else, something magic. And with the old woman's command, the people got everything together and carried it off deep into the mines. It took quite a bit of doing, mind you, reopening the tunnels, digging them out, and bringing all of it in. Then they set it up as if for a grand feast. And they waited, they fell outside the mines, of course. Nights went by, night after night. Nothing happened. This, mind you, was a very good thing, considering previously children were going missing at an alarming rate. Eventually, after several months of peace and quiet, the people very cautiously sent someone in to check. The old woman had warned him, when you do go in to check, don't touch anything. Don't touch the shoes, don't touch the creature, don't touch the table. And he entered very carefully, making sure he did not step upon any of the shoes scattered about. Down in that old chamber, there it was, the waxen figure, sitting at the table, very comfortably in that lovely chair that they had provided, his hands resting upon the table, motionless, like a statue. He waved his hands. Hey! He shouted. He stamped his feet and smacked against the dirt wall. Nothing. Silence. The creature was still. Finally realizing the horror was over, the people decided to do what they could to make sure it did not happen again. They had paintings and carvings of what they imagined was going on with the children and that horrible creature, and they put them up inside the room and sealed it shut with a much stronger door, hopefully to never be reopened again.